Hi, my name is Karen Tam. I'm a nursing instructor at Gary One Bose's Harkness Career and Technical Center. I am presently going to do the second CNA skill, also a basic nursing skill. And thank you for those who watched my first video on how to make a uh, closed bed and an open bed. I really appreciate it. But today, the skill that I'm going to do is how to empty a Foley catheter bag, measure it, and then document the intake and output. It is not only a CNA skill, it is also a basic nursing skill. So this skill is really appropriate for anyone who's going to be tested for the New York State CNA exam or anyone who is in nursing school. So again, thank you for watching my video. The first thing I, you should do with your patient is to always knock at their door. As you enter the room, you'd like to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Karen Tam. I'm your nurse today or nursing student, whoever you are, certi certified nursing assistant, and I'm going to empty your Foley bag and measure your output today. How are you feeling? Then after that, you are going to wash your hands. At the sink, you would wash your hands. I'm not going to demonstrate that procedure because that's a procedure for another time. But do remember to do it for 15 to 20 seconds. And when you do turn your water off, make sure you do have a paper towel because wetness does spread infection. So after I wash my hands, I will get my gloves. You will be wearing gloves for this procedure because there is the potential that you're gonna come in contact with the patient's body secretions. So now that I have my gloves, I will also get a paper towel because you will have a barrier on the floor from your graduate. I will now return back to the patient's bedside. I'm back into the patient's room next to the bedside. I do have my gloves on because I will be getting the graduate to measure the urine output. And you, this has been previously used, so you do not want to use your bare hands. You do want to follow infection control. What I am going to do is place the barrier on the floor and the graduate also on the floor. And here is the patient's Foley catheter bag. Besides emptying it as a nurse's aide or a nursing student, you also do want to check the tubing to make sure that it is not kinked or coiled. You also want to make sure that it is taped on the thigh because if it does pull, it's pulling on the thigh and it's not going to pull on the patient's urethra. Another part that you do want to assess is this last 8 to 10 inches, you have it clipped on the bed and that it is perpendicular and that allows for proper drainage of the patient's urine. This is by gravity. And under no circumstances should that bag ever be brought up higher than the patient's bladder because the urine will flow back and cause issues for the patients. Now that you did your assessment on your Foley and everything is good, you are now ready to empty it. So what you would like to do is to come over here and take the tubing out of the pouch and it is critical that you do not touch this whatsoever because it is considered clean and when you empty it, do not touch the edges of your graduate because you, again, you will contaminate it. So what I will do is I will push this area down and as the urine is emptying, and again, I am not touching the tip of it and I'm not touching the graduate. I can look and see all the urine has emptied. I now close my valve and I will put it back into the pocket. So I am done emptying the Foley bag. Now what I will do is take the graduate over to the sink and measure the output at eye level. I am now in the residence bathroom. I get another barrier and I set that on the sink and I will now take my graduate and set it down on the counter. I will now read the urinary output at eye level. 
and there is 375 cc's or milliliters in the graduate. I will now empty it into the patient's toilet. Many of the toilets will have a bar that will push down when you flush the toilet. There is a shower on it and you will clean your graduate, pour it back in, get a paper towel and dry your graduate out. I will now put it back into the patient's nightstand. And if you notice, I still have my gloves on because I am still touching the graduate. I will remove my gloves properly so I don't contaminate myself. I will now go and wash my hands. I am now done washing my hands and what I am now doing is I will document the patient's output on their intake and output sheet because if you don't document it, you didn't do it. Make sure you read your sheet. There's an intake part and there is an output. And the time is 11. We usually use military time, so it's 1100 hours. The type of output is urine. The amount is 375 cc's and my initials KTM. Okay. You have now completed that procedure by documenting it. I will now return back to the patient and make sure that the patient is safe, the patient doesn't need anything. Then what I will do is I will briefly review again the Foley catheter tubing. Before I leave my patient's room, I do make sure the bed's in low position and I do make sure that the call light is within easy reach. I ask my patient how they are and if they need anything and the patient is fine and he does at this point does not need anything. The one thing I would just like to show you before I leave, okay, I did check out the tubing and it all is placed good. What I would like to show you is just how we anchor the Foley catheter tubing to the patient's thigh. If you happen to have a leg strap, that is really ideal to work. But based on my experience, that usually is not available. So what I recommend is to do it the way that I will show you because you really don't want that pulling on the patient's urethra because it can cause irritation. You can accidentally pull it out and you can cause some trauma to it. And the procedure I'm going to show you is really very simple. If you have a skin prep available, you would like to use that. At this point, I don't feel the need to wear gloves because I will not come in contact with anybody's secretions. And let's just say this tape is loose or it's falling off, so you do have to replace it. So when you remove the tape, I do have my skin prep, and what it does is it toughens up the intact skin on the thigh. So you would open that up, rub it on the inside of the thigh, wait till it dries. Then you will get your tape. Take a piece about three to four inches. I always butterfly my tape because I think of the person who's going to remove this and it makes it a lot easier because you know how sometimes tape can just melt into the skin. And I put this right over where I had the skin prep. That will remain there for the length of the time that the patient has the Foley in. I then take another piece that will go on top of it, and again, I butterfly it, thinking of the person who has to remove it, and it's easier to grip. I then take the catheter, I make sure there's enough room, and I then place it over the piece of tape that I have already, and this causes less irritation on the patient's thigh. So now when the patient moves around, it will pull here on the tape and not on the urethra. And again, the tubing is not coiled or kinked. It is draining. Make sure that you do have it clipped onto your bottom sheet. The last eight to 10 inches, you want to make that as perpendicular as you can. It does promote proper drainage of the urine into the Foley bag. 
And you also want to make sure that your Foley bag is clipped onto the bed frame. You do not want to clip it on the side rail. If you do, when you raise the side rail, the bag will lift up and you are now above the bladder and the urine that's in the tubing may go back into the patient's bladder causing an infection. One last suggestion I do have is I like for my students to say out loud when they do the Foley catheter assessment for a couple of reasons. As they say it out loud, it helps them to remember the assessment and it also helps them pronounce medical terminology. For an example, just have them say that the catheter is taped to the inside of the thigh and the reason is that when it is tugged on, it tugs on the thigh and not on the urethra which could cause irritation and possibly come out. The tubing is not kinked, so the urine flows freely. And it is also clipped, the last eight to 10 inches is perpendicular to allow good flow into the urinary bag. And the urinary bag is also clipped to the bed frame. I would like to leave you with one last thought. As you are doing your urinary output, do make sure that the patient is at least voiding or urinating or micturating at least 65 mLs an hour. Thank you very much for watching this video.